Chip, chip, let it rip. It's time for a new episode of Hot News. How are you guys doing? Giant Linus Tech Tips water bottle. You can find one at ufdstore.com. But that's not today's video sponsor. Linus doesn't pay me to shell for him. You know who's today's video sponsor is Synergy. My friend, Synergy is the application that allows you to control multiple computers with one keyboard and mouse. You can just simplify your life. I have a keyboard and mouse at this desk, and I use it to control the computer that's normally set up at that desk, but I'm currently building brand new standing desk. So that's not happening right now, but if it did, I could just do it because Synergy allows you to use your devices across multiple computers, whether it be Linux, Mac, Windows, what have you, you can use it. Okay, so check it out at the link in the video description, $29 for the basic, $39 for the pro SSL encryption, which is gonna be good. That's a great price, phenomenal, not a monthly subscription. You own the software and it'll work on everything that you need. You don't need a KVM switch or anything like that. So Synergy, check them out down below. Now let's talk about how you, I mean, you can't use Synergy on a PlayStation 5, but you should be able potentially, according to this new patent from Sony, be able to use technology that we've only found on Nvidia cards that allow them to run much better than other cards out there. And this is deep learning super sampling, which look like Vaseline smeared over video games in its first implementation. But I can tell you from personal experience at 8K DLSS 2.0, looks actually a lot crisper than native 8k it just it just does and we'll go into a video in, in a second but anyways the whole reason i'm comparing it to dlss is because it's a technology that allows them to use artificial intelligence machine learning to upscale the image with either no detail loss or detail enhancement while running at a higher frame rate because they sample the upscaling from a much lower resolution. This essentially equates to faster frame rate and less horsepower needed. And this Sony patent looks like it potentially could provide that on the PlayStation 5. So the patent itself says it's an information processing device for acquiring a plurality of reference images attained by imaging an object that is to be reproduced. So essentially it's it's upscaling that. So they filed this on January 15, 2019. The publication happened just a week ago on the 23rd, but this could be a huge game changer for consoles where they actually would be able to run things at a 4K 60 FPS frame rate at high detail settings. And one of the videos I wanna point you guys to is where Digital Foundry actually compared the PS4 Pros 4K checkerboard rendering versus 4K DLSS quality mode over on a RTX setup. And the 4K checkerboard actually doesn't look too bad. The PS4 Pro, which doesn't have that much horsepower, it's basically an RX 480, 580, somewhere in there. And it can do really well at 4K with its checkerboarding techniques. If Sony can implement something similar with a machine learning protocol that's gonna take less resources away from the CPU and GPU, well, we could potentially be seeing really high quality 4K 60 FPS gameplay and potentially even up to 120 FPS at 4K because it is possible. I'll quote the AK TV video that we did over the weekend. You can check that out. LG's NanoCell 8K and using DLSS 2.0 in Death Stranding, I was able to hit 50 FPS on an RTX 2080 Ti, which is absurd. Turning DLSS 2.0 off led to about 20 FPS. And I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, just sitting still with 8K, at, with DLSS 2.0 turned on, it looked better than not having it on at all, which we're seeing in a lot of places. So if Sony can replicate something like that, next-gen consoles could look better and run faster than we have ever thought before. And hopefully AMD does have this coming in their next-gen GPUs to take over NVIDIA's DLSS monopoly right now, because I mean, it's hard to argue against having this as a feature because it legitimately increases detail and frame rate and who cares if that's coming from CUDA cores or not? I personally don't. So for machine learning hackery, who knows? I don't know. But you need to stay hydrated because you're not an artificial intelligence. UFDstore.com. I have a drinking problem. But that's not the end of the cons talk today. No, we got some Xbox Series X information coming as a courtesy of Phil Spencer's interview over on iJustine. He announced the fact that there should be, or he hinted at the fact that there should be an Xbox Series of X event taking place in July. So you could be expecting that as well as the fact that we could be seeing a lot more other games coming in at the high frame rate because at the Xbox Game Showcase that recently happened or in the Will of the Wisp was announced to be running at 120 FPS natively. And we might be seeing that back 
port compatibility for high frame rate come out to a lot of other games, which is great because the Series X has a 12 teraflop GPU. It does have the raw horsepower to run older games at 120 FPS, but I want to run next gen games at 120 FPS. That's where the DLSS technology comes in, and I'm excited for that. And AMD is excited for all of this because whether they sell Series X or PS5 or their upcoming big Navi, they don't care because they're winning big. They're making money from everybody, and AMD even making money on Wall Street because they beat expectations with their second all time highest revenue coming in in Q2 2020. You can see here in this chart down below, they are up 349% year on year for their net income, nearly 200% percent on their operating income they are slightly down from q1 2020 but they're just absolutely slaughtering it and with that lisa sue in her presentation did make sure to say that they are still on track for zen 3 and big navi launching the end of this year so just just don't they're, they're still launching it Shh. And while Intel can't get off the ground with their CPUs, we're still waiting on 10 nanometers anyways, they decided let's not engineer a new product, let's engineer a new branding for our product and actually a brand new name. So they are coming out with new trademark logos that are gonna be coming out for their core series of products as well as a new design uh, that's going to be Intel Evo powered by core. You can see here that this is slightly different than the current core series of branding. It's more minimalistic, it's okay. Intel Evo, at least allegedly, is more than likely going to be for their Alder Lake setup where it has big cores and little cores, kind of like on an ARM processor, the Evo being the evolution of next-gen processors that could potentially be what the Evo is for. We'll find out soon. And we're finding out that Rocket Lake does indeed support PCI Express 4.0 NVMe SSDs because in a SciSoft Sandra benchmark, we're seeing that, yeah, yeah, there it is, PCI Express 4.0 SSDs. But in order to cool Rocket Lake, you're probably gonna need a beefy cooler, not a fanless one, but guess what? You probably can't get a fanless one for a little while anyways, because Noctua showed off their fanless cooler recently, and they had to update the roadmap saying that they are delayed a little bit. You can see here the roadmap that they're coming out in Q3 2020, the black versions of the NHD15S and the NHU9S. Q4 is the Redux line of CPU coolers. In Q1 of 2021, black version of the NFA12. Heatsink covers for the NHU12A, black version of the NHU12A, white fans, passive CPU cooler, eight-way fan hub, 24 volt to 12 volt voltage converter, and then a whole bunch of other stuff that they're coming out with. So Noctua having to delay the roadmap, but still, coming out with really good stuff. And speaking of delaying roadmaps, Universal and AMC shortening roadmaps to get commercial theater releases out to premium video on demand in your streaming home in 17 days. This is actually pretty historical, which is going to allow Universal to publish their movies online a lot sooner than they were previously, 17 days from when it launches in the name C theater, then it can come out on premium video on demand, which just means winning for the consumers, at least I think this is winning. I like it. And I don't know if Samsung's winning with the Galaxy Z Fold 2, but it's kind of been leaked in an official product images as well as a full spec sheet. Uh, it's 7.7 inch foldable display with 120 hertz refresh rate, which sounds amazing. We'll have to see what the price is. This is expected to be unveiled at Galaxy Unpacked event, which is on August 5th, I believe. But let's talk about the Nord phone because this is gonna be significantly cheaper than the Galaxy Fold. The Nord phone, which is the budget phone that's going over to the Europe and everywhere else on the other side of the world, not here in the US. Well, OnePlus is more than likely going to be bringing out a Nord branded phone to the US, but not the specific Nord. So we'll just have to wait for that to hit our shores. It's not really anything new, just more of a confirmation to the fact that they will be coming out with more budget phones for the US market. But this might not be a budget oriented product, but it's going to come to my market in my ears because there's a new patent showing that AirPods might feature bone conduction technology to enhance the audio experience of listening in your ears because right now we just kind of use air, but the AirPods could touch your bones and then vibrate your 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 skeleton in order to make you hear things better. But don't forget to moisten up your skeleton uftstore.com. You can see the patent here includes a bone conduction transducer as well as an air conduction transducer for making them ear wiggle woggles. I don't know why I said that. But Sony trying to make sure that they are bone conducing bodies to the road. I'm sorry, that's a weird segue. Anyways, the prototype Vision S, which was unveiled at CES, apparently is hitting the Tokyo roads. They are actually bringing this as an actual driving car, not as something that was just a prototype that was unveiled. 
because that's all it looked like. It didn't look functional, but here it is. It's functional. It's driving on the Tokyo roads and they're planning on doing all of their testing in Tokyo to make sure that all of the sensors and everything that they're working on for the self-driving technology will be ready to go. So they're doing that on real roadways. Who would have thought? Solar freaking roadways. Solar freaking roadway. And that's going to wrap up this episode of Hot News. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for listening to all the rimbling and ramblings of me. And thank you for checking out today's video sponsor, Synergy, to make sure that you can control multiple devices with one keyboard and mouse, Linux, Macs, Windows, what have you. Do it. And UFD to store.com.